in me, all my people. For the last one year, it's been very difficult for me. But I'm a very persevering man, very enduring. And um, what happened on Thursday is a culmination of continuous persecution and stress for a year. And when I look at it, probably it is history repeating itself. But President William Ruto wanted to take me the route President Daniel Ramoy took Kenneth Matiba. He pushed Matiba up to getting a stroke and eventually dying. When I look to what the president is doing to me, especially now when I'm in hospital, crippling me, feeding me like an animal, I think he wanted to take me the Matiba route. But God is gracious. It didn't happen that way. I hear many of his people are calling here asking whether I'm dead, whether I'll survive, whether I'll recover. They were celebrating. It's the most unfortunate thing that has ever happened in this country. That you can be so vicious to a man who helped you to be president. And the crime of this man, telling you the truth, don't evict people without compensation, Mr. President. Mr. President, don't overtax people. You are killing them, you are killing their businesses. Don't force a housing program on people. If people do not want these houses, don't force them. My only problem with the president is just being truthful because nobody else can tell him. The framers of the 2010 constitution wanted a deputy president who is elected. As a bava who can stand for the people. The charity we are being treated for, too, is get rid of an elected deputy president and appoint a control freak. A fellow you appoint who cannot ask a question, who cannot say anything. And I'm sure if they succeed, he'll be asked to sign an undated resignation letter so that in case he starts asking questions, he can just be told to resign. But the framers of the 2010 constitution were very clear in their mind why they wanted a deputy president who is elected. I'm the only man in the cabinet and in the whole government who can stand up to President William Ruto and tell him, hey brother, this is not right. This a done thing is not good for the country. There's too much corruption, Mr. President. This how things thing is being forced down on the people of Kenya. And they don't like it. Please don't force it down on them. You know, situations where medical equipment that was being supplied by Kenyans to the Ministry of Health now has been given to one single Asian. I said, Mr. President, this is not right. We are killing our business people. So, as we speak, I say that uh, my lawyers are in court. We have faith in our judiciary. And I requested that according to the rules of natural justice, I be accorded an opportunity to be heard in the Senate. You remember I presented myself to the National Assembly and defended myself. In the Senate, I was there day one. And even when the Speaker asked me to sit down to listen to the charges, I decided to stand up to face my accusers. I was there the following day. I was ready for cross-examination. The 11 counts is nothing but malice and fiction. It was a political game by the president to get rid of me. And looking at it, I don't think the president had any intention of ever working with me. I think.